This video is brought to you by Loot Crate. Head today to LootCrate.com slash ReviewTechUSA and enter the code RTU to save 10% on any subscription plan. Skip it up and that up. So a lot of you may not realize it, but it really was Rockstar and Take-Two Interactive that pioneered DLC as we know it today. For better or for worse uh if you think back to grand theft auto 4 excuse me i was about to say 5 grand theft auto 4 for the playstation 3 and xbox 360 they came out with two huge dlc packs for it the ballad of gay tony and the lost and the damned and ever since then dlc has been a thing in the gaming industry and that's an understatement well take two president carl slatoff discusses why it's dangerous to milk gamers for dlc this is what he had to say i think I think the difference right now is that we're recognizing that it is a significant strategic asset for us to keep our consumer engaged with our franchises in between major releases. And it also affords us the opportunity not only to be engaged with the product, that's always good to keep the game in somebody's hands and keep people excited about the franchise, but also giving us the opportunity to make more money from the consumer. But the most important thing for us is that the consumer can't feel like they're just being milked at every turn. The key factor to success with recurrent consumer spending is to provide consumers with incremental content that they value. And that's the core of our strategy behind our recurrent consumer spending is to provide them with deep content in the initial release that keeps them engaged, that creates opportunities, and it's to offer them additional content that they find to be very meaningful and are very happy to pay for if the opportunity arises. So look, I like how Take-Two and Rockstar are looking at DLC. They, they want it to be something you want to buy. You don't have to feel like you have to buy. Like, cough, cough, Capcom. Like, cough, cough, Activision. You buy Call of Duty. Sure, you don't have to buy the map packs or, or the season pass, but when, you know, Bob's, the 15-year-old Bob, his friends all have the different map packs and he doesn't, he's going to feel like he has to get it and he's obligated to get it so he can game with his friends online. Capcom puts on disc DLC, or they did anyway, or they're already working, or and I love when companies already have DLC completed for a game and are asking you to buy it before the game is actually even released. That is the epitome of milking. Now on the flip side, I got a call take two and Rockstar on a tad bit of hypocrisy because they did have a DLC pass with Max Payne 3 the day of release, if you don't remember. But yeah, when, when Rockstar makes DLC like they did for Grand Theft Auto 4, it feels worthwhile. And they give a bunch for Grand Theft Auto Online. They, they give a whole bunch of free stuff away with that and they don't make you pay for it. So they are one of the least guilty DLC culprits out there. They've done wrong before, like I said, with Max Payne 3, but they do DLC right more so than anybody else. So my hats off to Rockstar and Take Two for giving good content when it comes to DLC. All right, folks, this is Rich of Review Tech USA. Make sure to rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for supporting my channel. Have a good one.